Oklahoma is actually one of the most secure states for voting, and we're extremely efficient. We have Paul Xerox um, here running our elections. <clears throat> I have no doubt that he would be able to fully implement ranked choice voting. And if that means getting having to use a federal funding, you know, federal grant to update our tabulating machines, we could definitely do that. Voters understand it. Voters like it. When it was used in New York City for the first time in 2021, they had polls afterwards. 95% of voters said, I totally get this. This is really, really easy. This is simple to do. Um, we rank things all the time. Um, and uh, so I don't think that's a problem for people to do. Uh, you know, certainly a lot of our elections are taking more time to uh, cast ballots, uh, you know, and count them all up. Uh, but I think that probably ha could be said about a mail-in voting. It could be said about early voting. Oftentimes state legislatures are the ones who are making this so difficult because they've got uh, laws passed saying you can't count mail-in votes until the day of an election. Uh, that is what backs up the system. That is what um, you know. Many folks in 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 Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and and uh, Michigan in some of those states that had uh, slowness in results in in 2020 were counting on. They knew that they could release that pressure valve and actually count those votes early. They did not because they wanted to be able to sow that kind of doubt in voters' minds after the fact. Um, it's a bad faith argument. I think you're right, and I think it's used on both sides. And unfortunately, it's a political gamesmanship tool uh, that we see all too often. And the truth is we, we need each other. And one thing that I'm sure, Mickey, you've probably seen quite a bit of, you know, when we get, when we get dragged down into the culture war stuff and issues where, you know, abortion, LGBTQ, Second Amendment, when that becomes the main topic of discussion, which is a wedge issue in the political arena, where it's designed to only divide and conquer, because many people will always be set in their ways regarding those particular beliefs. You're never going to get anywhere of productivity. But if the focus is we need more electoral choice, we need to remove the for-profit middlemen between us and our doctors. We need to be able to pay a living wage so we don't have to rely on government assistance. We need to have a say in terms of how energy extraction is done in the United States and, frankly, how our foreign policy is conducted. I think those are the key issues of our day, and they bring as many people together as possible. And as as so, as long as it isn't about red versus blue, you know, conservative versus liberal, any of that stuff, most people agree. And that's why I think most people agree on ranked choice voting. And last thought before we wind down, um, the one other electoral reform that is out there, it's only in three states, Louisiana, California, and Washington, is jungle primaries. What do you guys think of that electoral option? Does that in any way improve over a first-past-the-post system that we have in most states? I can jump in here. Um, you know, in a, in a red state like Oklahoma, jungle primaries, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, from what I've heard, what I've floated this out to, for example, caucus members or constituents is that it creates in, in a you know blood red, ruby red state like Oklahoma, uh, you may end up with, you know, two Republicans on the ticket. So um, in my opinion, I'd rather see ranked choice voting or um, um, instead of jungle primaries. I have heard that some of my Republican colleagues like that idea, but it may be more uh, competitive or it could it may be more politically advantageous for them to have that, but not maybe so much for other parties trying to get in on the, you know, in, in on the competition or remain competitive within the election. I, I think that's definitely true in one party dominated states, a state like, you know, your neighbors to the south, you know, Texas might have a little bit more uh, competitiveness regarding a jungle primary situation. Uh, but a state like Oklahoma, a state like Arkansas, a state like Louisiana, obviously, or well, Louisiana has it. But yes, generally speaking, it ends up being the top two in the one party. And the same is true in California exactly. and Washington. So, yes, it's a very good point. Um, and I'm guessing you guys would probably feel the same way. Yeah, I think you see, uh, you know, even in California, I was recently at a conference discussing these kinds of issues um, with uh, the 
the architect of the California jungle primary system. And even he is now has come along to the position of it's not working. We need ranked choice voting. But the important thing is that that actually the, the best, in my opinion, reform possible is to institute an open nonpartisan primary, which is essentially a jungle primary. But rather than taking the top two out of that, take the top five candidates or four candidates, some people do four, and move them to a general election, which is then determined by ranked choice voting. So that eliminates the problem of facing like one you know, two two people of the same party against each other in that jungle primary. Um, you know, one one of my things I always thought was funny was Kamala Harris in some ways is pre- vice president right now because when she ran for Senate, she ran against another Democrat who in her closing arguments of their one senatorial debate dabbed on stage, right? Like that's the quality of competition that that jungle primary got. And, you know, you may like Kamala Harris or not, but, but that like, there's like this track of like, she had a pretty easy time getting into a general and then facing a, a candidate who was subpar because of the way that system played out. Whereas if you have four or five, then you have probably a Republican, you have maybe a Libertarian or a Green Party candidate in there, Forward Party one day soon in there, and they can all compete under a ranked choice voting system. And that that package of reform um, of, of that kind of open or jungle primary with more than two people coming out being decided by ranked choice voting gets you really the best of both worlds in that case. I am not going to dab, um, uh, <laughs> but um, I, I can certainly see the appeal of these packages uh, of reform <clears throat> in statewide races. Uh, where I think they fall short is in state legislative and congressional races where these districts have already been drawn and gerrymandered in such a way as to um, make them uncompetitive for one party or another. Uh, it simply doesn't work to have an open primary uh, or you know a final five system in a district that has already been drawn to be blood red or or bright blue, you're not actually fixing the uh, problem there. Uh, I think if we want to actually fix that problem, what we have to do is think about a more proportional Congress, more proportional state legislatures, um, and to be thinking about something like the Fair Representation Act, which uh, Don Beyer of Virginia, Jamie Raskin of Maryland, and uh, uh, Rokana from California have sponsored that would combine larger multi-member districts, um, districts of three, four, and five, um, um, uh, same number of folks from each state. So, um, you know, I'm in Massachusetts. We have nine. We still have nine. We simply have three districts of three or a district of four and a district of five. And then you go ahead and use ranked choice voting. Uh, there's a lot of structural fixes we can do. You know, I mean, we can be thinking about uh, states as laboratories of democracy, or we can be thinking about them as they so often are now, you know, meth labs of uh, democracy that are actually making it worse. Um, and we can uh, find the structural fixes we need to work our way out of this moment. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.